a set review, taking a look at the most powerful cards in the set, the multicolored cards. This is where all of the rares and mythics in the set have been hiding. We're going to take a look at them, talk about all of the archetypes that they bring together, all that goodness, our opening thoughts on these cards for standard and limited. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you find any value in it. We're live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. I'd love your company. You can also join our Discord if you are interested in winning up to $3,000 worth of cash prizes. Put towards your gem collection in Magic the Gathering Arena. Just check out our competitions and giveaways tab. They're not all in one. It is spread out through a whole bunch of things. They're not all competitive either. So you could, excuse me, win money by just posting your favorite memes. It's as easy as that, you guys. So thanks for watching. Let's take a look at all of the multicolored spells in Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths. Multicolored spells have always been my favorite cards in Magic the Gathering. They're so powerful. They bring different colors and archetypes together, which is um, just, it's the greatest thing. It's Magic the Gathering, right? Um, so anyways, we're going to take a look at the multicolored cards of Ikora, Layer of Behemoth. Back for more is our first card. It's an instant for six. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So it's a resurrection or a reanimator spell plus a fight spell and one for six. So that's actually not the worst. Boneyard Lurker for four. It's a four four. Mutate cost is also for four. Whenever this creature mutates, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Barakos Apex of Forever. This costs five. It's a six six. The mutate cost is also five. Trample. You may cast Barakos Apex of Forever from your graveyard using its mutate ability. So that's actually quite powerful as long as he does not get exiled. Channeled Force for four. This is an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard X cards. Target player draws X cards. Channeled Force deals X damage up to one target creature or planeswalker. Chevelle Bane of Monsters, Golgari Colors, has Death Touch. It's a 1-3, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponent control no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Whenever a permanent and opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. Death's Oasis, costing three, Abzan Colors, and Enchantment, Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into the graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature card that died from your graveyard to your hand. Sacrifice Death's Oasis. You gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. Um, and actually, pretty viable card in some new deadly brews. Um, I like the art of this too. We've got like the skeleton of the old dead beast there as well, and like a little ghoul here creeping around, right? Dire Tactics, another one of my favorite multicolored cards of the set, only costing two, it's an instant. Exile target creature, if you don't control a human, use li you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. So exile creature for two instant speed, if you have a human, you don't lose life. That's pretty good, right? Airy Ultimatum for, what is this, uh, 247? Abzan colors as well here. Return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. Emergent Ultimatum, Salt Eye colors, another sorcery. Search your library for up to three monocolored cards with different names, then exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards. You shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other two cards without paying their mana costs, and you exile Emergent Ultimatum. Frondland. Baladair for four. This is a cat beast, three five with vigilance. Creatures you control with vigilance have pay one plus tap it to tap target creature. General Kudro of Draneth for three. Drain or sorry, <laughs> workshop colors. It's a three three legendary creature, human soldier. Other humans you control get plus one plus one whenever General Kudro of Draneth or another human enters the battlefield under your control. Exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. You can pay two sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. This is a very nice card, and we're going to see a lot of it, I'm sure. We have General's Enforcer, also Orja of Colors, a creature human soldier. Two, three, legendary humans you control have indestructible. 
you can pay four exile target card from a graveyard if it was a creature card create a one one white human soldier creature token that's pretty cool genesis ultimatum also for seven this is team your colors sorcery Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them into the battlefield and the rest into your hand. Exile Genesis Ultimatum. Aluna Apex of Wishes. This is going to cost us seven as... Sorry. This is only going to cost us five. Uh, the Mutate spell cost is six, so a little bit more expensive there. It has Flying Trample. It's a 6-6. Six, six. And whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. Put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. So that is a very, very nice card and very well might be the best card of the set, you guys. That is incredible. Inspired Ultimatum. This is Jessica Colors, a sorcery, costing 7. Target player gains 5 life. Inspired Ultimatum deals 5 damage to any target. Then you draw five cards. Wow, that's one of my favorites. Kanan Bonder Prodigy for two. This is a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you tap a non-line permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produce. For seven, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. What? Did we need more... Uh, Broken cards like that? That's crazy, right? That's so good. Labyrinth Raptor, costing two Rakdos colors. It's a 2-2 two -two with Menace, and whenever a creature you control with Menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. Oh my god. It's not even whenever this creature, it's whenever a creature you control with Menace. That's incredible. We can use that Planeswalker that gives all of our creatures Menace, right? So very powerful. You can also pay two creatures you control with menace gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. The second card is Lord Dracus. It costs three. Is it colors? It's a two, three. It has a mutate cost of two. Whenever this creature mutates, return target creature, or sorry, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is great for that. Is it spell casting? Sling those spells, boys. Uh, we have Narset of the Ancient Way, a legendary planeswalker coming into the battlefield with four loyalty counters on it, plus one of you gain two life, add Jessica mana, spend this only to cast non-creature spells. You can minus two, draw a card, then you may discard a card when you discard a non-land card, this way Narset of the Ancient, ancient Way deals damage equal to the card's converted mana cost to the creature or planeswalker. I should read from over here, it's way bigger. You get an emblem with whenever this um, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this emblem deals 2 damage to any target for minus 6. So that's actually a pretty cool emblem as well. And she comes into the field of 4, only has a plus 1. So you have to have her onto the field for a minimum of 2 turns to get that emblem off. 3 if you want to have her survive. We have Necro Panther, Orge of Colors here. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Mutate cost of 4. Whenever this creature mutates, return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Nethroi Apex of Death. This card costs 5. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Mutate uh, cost of 7. Death Touch Lifelink. Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with converted... Sorry, with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Really? Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power, 10 or less, from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh my lord. That is a very good card as well. These Apex cards are nasty, you guys. Offspring's Revenge. This is going to cost us 5 Mardu Colors and Enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, XL target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1-1. One, one. It gains haste until your next turn. That's neat. That's a jank card to build around. Reminds me of Enigmatic Incarnation a little bit. Parcel Beast for 4. It's a 2-4. Mutate cost for 2. You can pay 1 plus tapping it. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it into the battlefield. If you don't put that card into the battlefield, put it into your hand. So you're paying 1, tapping to draw. Pretty neat. Primal Empathy for 3, and Enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a 1-1 counter on a creature you control. So that's a really good ramp card as well. 
pretty sure ramp in fact um, and then a draw engine once you get there quartzwood crasher um, another card for five trample it has six six though a very powerful card and whenever one or more creatures you control with trample deal combat damage to a player create an xx green dinosaur beast token with trample where x is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player oof that's pretty nice i like that card quite a bit that's gonna find its way into historic dinosaurs no doubt we have a regal leosaur for two it's a two two dinosaur cat mutate cost of three whenever this creature mutates other creatures you control get plus two plus one until end of turn rail the everwise for three this is a zero three Human Wizard, Rail the Everwise gets plus one plus zero for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Whenever you discard a card, one or more cards for each time each turn for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. <clears throat> Sorry about that, you guys. So this is a really, really neat card in Is It. Um just extending that draw engine, right? Whenever you discard one or more card for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. Lots of cards are like discard one card, draw two cards. So now it's going to be discard one card, draw two cards, draw an additional card. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, a very powerful card in the deck. We're going to see this card in play for a very long time. Runos Ultimatum. This is also costing seven. Mardu Colors. Destroy all non-land permanents and opponent controls. Incredible. Savai Thundermane for two. This is a 3-2 Elemental Cat. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay two when you do Savai Thundermane, it deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life. Skull Prophet, a human druid, adding Golgari colors when it's tapped, it's a 3 1, and you can also tap it to put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Skycat Sovereign for two, it's a 1 1 with flying, an elemental cat, so that's actually pretty cool. Skycat Sovereign gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with flying. You can pay four to create a 1-1 one, one white cat bird creature token with flying. Slither Wisp for three. Demir Colors. It's a 3-2 with flash. An Elemental Nightmare. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card for each... And each opponent loses one life. I thought it was going to say you draw a card for each uh, life an opponent has lost... I'm, I'm making things up, you guys. I'm making this card better than it is. Uh, to clarify, this is a 3-2 with flash, and whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card, and each opponent loses one life. <laughs> Moving on, we have another Apex, Snapdax, Apex of the Hunt, Mardu Colors. This one only costs four, you guys. It's nice and cheap. A legendary creature, Dinosaur Cat Nightmare, mutate costs of five. It's a 3-5 with double strike. Whenever this creature mutates, it deals 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and you gain 4 life. Ooh, these snapped axes, or sorry, no, these apexes are great. Song of Creation is an enchantment. Teamer colors casting for 4, costing 4. You may play an additional land on each of your turns, like they needed that, right? Whenever you cast a spell, draw 2 cards at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. So there's a downside there that you have to discard your hand, but oh my lord, um, there's a lot of power in that. Spirit Dragon for two, it's a 1-1 one, one Flying Haste Fairy Dragon. Whenever a non-creature spell uh, is played, or whenever you cast one, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Spirit Dragon. So that's a very cool uncommon. Titan's Nest for four, Salt Eye Colors and Enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard and yeah. uh, exile a card from your graveyard add a colorless mana spend this mana only to cast a colorless spell with it out an x in its mana cost interesting so i guess it acts as a land ramp right and then it also helps you mill yourself if you want so that's unique that's going to fit somewhere for sure there's sultai self mill that exists Trumpeting Gnar, or Trumpeting Gnar, I'm sure, for a 3. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever this creature mutates, create a 3-3 three, three beast uh, token that's green, and the mutate cost is 5, so quite expensive there. Another Apex, Vardrock Apex of Thunder, only costing 3? Oh no. A, another Elemental Dinosaur Cat, mutate cost for 4, flying first strike. 
Whenever this creature mutates, you may cast target non-creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Oh, bad. They just keep getting better and better. Whirlwind of Thought for four. Also Jessica colors. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. I'll take it. Winota, Joiner of Forces for four. This is Boros colors. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human creature card from among them into the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library in a random order. That's interesting. That's not bad. That's pretty cool. Zenith Flare, also for four. Also Boros colors. An instant, though. Zenith Flare deals X damage to any target, and you gain X life, where X is the number of cards with cycling uh, abilities in your graveyard. Okay. Alert Heed Bonder for three. It's a 2-4 with Vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, you gain one life for each creature you control with Vigilance. Interesting. You can build around that for sure. Cunning Night Bonder. This is a human rogue with flash. It's a 2 2 for 2, so not bad. Spells with flash you cast cost one less to cast and cannot be countered. Ooh! That's hot, you guys. I like it. Fiend Artisan for 2. It's a 1 1. Fiend Artisan gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card in your graveyard. <laughs> nice. You can pay X plus 1 and tap it. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. Oh! I don't even know, you guys. That's a deadly card. We're going to see that around. I guarantee it. Garuda Doom of Depth for 6. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Demon Kraken. It has Companion. Your starting deck um, must contain cards that are only even converted mana costs here. And when it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a, pre put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Interesting. Jagnatha, the Wellspring for five. An elemental elk, it's five five. Companion is only starting deck may have cards with one of the same mana symbol as its mana cost, so no double colors. It's important to have the multicolors because you can use one of each, right, for that. And then you can tap it for one color of every single mana, which is really cool. And it cannot be used to cast generic mana costs as well. So that's really going to base yourself on a huge multicolor deck, which, like I said, has these double color costs in it. You'll see here the Fiend Art, like they all around here do have those dual color options. So it's going to really help this wellspring out. Jubilant Skybonder, I found... Oh no, this isn't actually it. This is a three cost human wizard, two two flying, creatures you control flying, um, have spells your opponent control cast. Uh, oh my god. Creatures you control with flying have spells your opponent cast that target this creature cost two more to cast. My golly, you guys, we've been at it a little bit today. Kahara the off orphan guard. Woof. Quite literally. <laughs> a cat beast, it's 3-2, has companion. Each creature card in your starting deck is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast card. It has vigilance, and each other creature card with the before mentioned types have a plus one, plus one, and vigilance. Very interesting. That's actually really cool. If you can combine this with the card that's uh, right here, that gives your guys with vigilance uh, another life each turn, um, that works really good. And he's a human scout, so I'm actually not sure that that will work. I don't think it will because of his companion cost. So if you wanted to use him as the companion, you'd have to ignore that. But maybe you do ignore it, right? Karuga, the Macrosage for five. It's a 5-4 five, dinosaur hippo with companion. Your starting deck consists of only cards with converted mana cost three or greater and lands. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost three or greater. So that's a pretty nice draw engine. Lurus of the Dream Den for three. It's a 3-2. Three, Companion is each permanent card in your starting deck has mana converted cost two or less. Lifelink, during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. Ooh, I like that quite a bit. Uh, Lutri, the Spell Chaser for three. It's a 3-2 three, with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, 
copy an instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for that copy. It has companion. Each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name. Oh my gosh, that's weird. That is used in popper events, I believe. No, singleton events. What am I thinking? Um, Aubrish, Obush, the Prey Piercer for 5. It's a 3-5. Companion is your starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs. If source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals dump, double that damage to that player or permanent instead. Proud Wild Bonder for 4. For 4-3, four, it has Trample. Creatures you control with Trample have this creature assigns combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Ooh! That's a pretty cool combination with that dinosaur that makes an X dinosaur for how much trample damage was assigned. That could be a very nice uh, slam down there. So Norris Howlbonder for three. It's a 2-2 two -two menace. Each creature you control with menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Umori the Collector for four. It's a 4-5 four companion. Each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. So all creatures, all they would all have to be creatures, probably. As a enters the battlefield, choose a card type. And then spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. So basically, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Or it could be legendaries, I guess. Your whole deck could be legendaries, I think, with this as well. Because legendary is also a card type, not just creature, I think. Anywho, the most interesting card of the set, in my opinion, is... Yoron Sky Nomad, costing 5, it's a 4-5 with flying. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of your next step, so it's just like a universal flash or flicker. It has companion. Your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. What? Very interesting here, you guys. Um, I like it. We also have... For our final multicolored card here, Zerda the Dawn Waker for three. It's a 3-3 three, three Elemental Fox with Companion. Each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. Activated abilities that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect cannot be reduced the mana uh, to less than one mana. So it always needs to be one, right? You can also pay one and tap it. Target creature cannot be blocked this turn. So quite interesting. We only have three colorless cards and they're not that interesting, so we're gonna tag them on to the end of the video here. They are Adaptive Shimmerer, a 0 0 with flash. It enters the battlefield with 3 1 1 counters on it, costs 5. Woof. Farfinder for 3, a 1 1 with vigilance. When Farfinder enters the battlefield, you may search your library for your basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Not really that great, but it is land fixing. Mysterious Egg for 1, it's a 0 0, oh, sorry, a 0 2. And whenever this creature mutates, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So, um, semi-interesting, right? Up next, we do have uh, a few artifacts and lands to talk about. So, stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you're notified of our next video. And we are going to take a look at our artifact spells and our land spells for Ikora, Lair of Behemoths. Thanks for watching, you guys. We're live on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. And you should also probably just join the Discord right now. Link in the description below. Check out our competitions and giveaways tab once you do make your way in there. After that, be sure to introduce yourself and start partaking in some of our events. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow.